we have started to record a special session of MM4133 Foreign Language Media in America for the fall semester. This is a Friday, October 28, research data special edition of the course. The reason that I wanted to do this is to make certain that for two students who have not been here, one because of major surgery and the other because she is in Florida for a Walt Disney World internship, that they can see in real time, as well as the rest of you, what's going to be taking place for the rest of the semester, in addition to examining some of the work that you have done for media presentations one and two, and also double checking the syllabus for information and also double checking all of the addresses. But because there have been some issues with Blackboard file extensions this week, I am going to stay on my Google Docs account instead of trying to go to my other social media feeds or my webcam because there have been some issues going from one different visual to another. So I'm going to play it safe and stay right here. Let's scroll through some of the work that you have done with your first media presentation, which was international media image. These go back all the way to fall of 2012. We'll take a look at as many of these as possible from top to bottom from the fall semester of 2022, keeping in mind there are some of you in this class, Jonathan, Haley, and Kalijah, who are producing all of your works on Canva, making them available on websites. So I'm going to be focusing exclusively on Microsoft PowerPoint or Google Slides presentations that have been produced, sent to my Yahoo account, my email address, and then posted on my website. So this is Taylor, who is in Florida right now for the Walt Disney internship. We will take a look at her international media image of GQ Korea, scrolling from top to bottom. We're not going to be clicking on the interactivity because they all, as you're well aware from other courses that I taught during the pandemic, open in a different window. And with some of the challenges Blackboard has faced this week with the interactivity, I don't want to leave Google Docs. But this is what she did, looking at how GQ Korea is catering to its particular clientele. Nine slides, design consistency all the way through, including lots of links, showing how the publication is not only adapting to a Korean audience, in this case, primarily South Korea, but what it is doing to cater to an English speaking or an American audience. Moving on, next door also from fall of 22, this is Lauren Singletary and Hulu Japan. We talked about this in class. I also sent this out as an example of a shout out on my social media. How is Hulu Japan different than Hulu in the United States or anywhere across the world? How you can watch this particular service in the United States? What some of the compatible devices are? What the social media feeds are? And as you're well aware, in many countries of the world, there are going to be social media outlets that we're not aware of. And that's something possibly Lauren could examine for a future wildcard paper or media presentation on social media, which is going to be coming up soon. Continuing down the list, focusing on fall 2022 projects that have been sent to me, this is Gwen Gunnels, like Taylor. She has been out for a while, in Gwen's case, recovering from major surgery. She looked at the Florentine, an English speaking publication produced in Italy from 2005. She, Lauren, many of you are very creative when it comes to design consistency, the magazine itself, the consistent look 
of how her slides are with the font styles and font colors for the headlines and the text. Everything is quite specific. And as we often do, give it one more look from the bottom to the top. Scrolling on. And remember, these are 2012, 2014, 2016, 2018, 2020. And another one from 2022. This is Trey Miner, who looked at the Rio Times. The background information being from Brazil, the uniqueness of the research and the stylistic approach all the way through, how it is catering to an international and local clientele. And as we talked about in class, don't ever be afraid, as Trey does here, as giving not only, as he calls my opinion, but sometimes what your suggestions would be for improvement in terms of catering to an international media audience. And that is the Rio Times. As you can see from the past, Vogue has been a popular topic. You've got Vogue Australia. You've got here from 2016 Vogue China. You've got Vogue Paris from fall 2014. And of course, many of you remember Katie Ledbetter, Vogue Paris from 2020. And next door, is Maggie Gunnels, and she examined for her international media image, Wanted in Rome. Like Gwen, like Lauren, like Taylor, these were all produced using Google Slides. Some of you send me both the PowerPoint or you send me a PDF or, in this case, with those students I just mentioned, you send me the Google Slides, does it want to appeal to American audiences? In her opinion, it does. So the, the design, the interactivity, the social media outreach by the particular publication is creative and it's thoughtful. And Maggie does a good job of chronicling that in her analytical perspective. Then we move on into our second media presentation, which is advertising and public relations strategies. This is what Trey did for Adidas. He's very consistent in using Arial as a font style. And I think what all of you need to remember is whenever you have slides that feature photos or graphics, try to work your way around with the topic, the font style for the title, the font style, the title for the bottom, with your name, the course, and when it was taught. In the case of Adidas, he again uses the Arial font style with italics as it was translated by my computer whenever I took it from the download from his PowerPoint, because that's what he still uses. Also, for the bullet points, everything that you do, double check to make certain that if it needs it, that you put shade around all of the text for the bullet points and all of the text for the headlines. And also double check to make sure that you've got a minimum of 1.0 spacing so nothing's going to call attention to itself. And as you can see, all of the links to the interactivity work. We talked about this slide in class. What has been done for the products and target market slide? No transparency for the photo, taking the headline, putting it over on the right-hand side in the dead space in a larger font in italics, and then for the bullet points, putting it in a smaller font style in 1.0 spacing, again, with shading, where it's not going to call attention to itself and the text is not going to be over the shoes. So everything complements each other for the text image balance. And then you've got Marketing to America with the Run DMC and My Adidas commercials, and then the social media outreach on all of these platforms. Again, using all of this dead space on the left-hand side, not only for the headline, 
but also putting this in such a format where it's not conflicting with anything down here at the bottom, including the logo. Why the three stripes? Same thing. Don't put it left center or left margin. Put it in this particular square so there's design consistency. Same thing here with the links, so it's not going to conflict with the SUV. And there's the Adidas official website with a link at the bottom. What Trey has done is a good job of taking a brand that everyone knows around the world and understanding that even though it is well known, it still has to market itself to stay relevant and timely. Then we move on. Lots of quality projects here. This is what Gwen did for Burberry of London. The creativity that she provides, particularly with the plaid motif all the way through on her slides. With the US locations, its business model, like what Lauren does, image contains link to website, all opening in different windows, but we're going to stay right here. And then her social media imprint from bottom to top. The advertising and public relations strategies I thought were done quite well, and that was reflected in your grades. And then we move directly underneath to something that I also thought was well done from Maggie, which was Ferrero Rocher. And as you scroll down, you'll notice, as we talked about in class, that she also incorporates a Chinese advertisement for the chocolates. So here she goes into the history of the brand, which is relatively new to me. 1982 does not seem that long ago. And then you've got links to all of the different products, among others. How Ferrero Rocher advertises with a link, and she talked about that in class. There is the corporate website, and if you look closely, there are a number of American brands within the Ferrero Rocher family, including from left to right on top, Butterfinger, Crunch, Baby Ruth, Bueno, which we see in a lot of stores in the United States. And then you can see very clearly Nutella and off to the side, Tic Tac. Some of the US brands with a link. And there are the Chinese commercial links with the American commercial and the social media platform, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, in reverse order on the slide. The chocolate color, the colors of Ferrero Rocher are cleverly put to use by Maggie on her media presentation. Quality global research. And then continuing down, we are going to get to different types of projects that were done in past years. But now that brings us to Neighborhood from Lauren, which was the first media presentation on advertising and public relations strategies that we were looking at. Founded in 1994, all of these links have been looked at in Overstreet 302. The catering, the coffee, catering to a specific demographic group, especially age-wise. The social media imprint for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, the website itself. Very clever use of font style, font color, spacing, products. It has a professional look and global research perspective. And that brings us to something that I told Carlin in class I had never heard of, which was OnCloud, something that she uses, as well as apparently other members of the SAU volleyball team. But on the title slide, she's focusing on the advertising campaigns. And you've got her name, the course, and dated by the semester. She defines what on cloud is in the clouds. Very good job. The target market for the brand, everything here, including the links, 
has been double checked for accuracy. All of her text and all of her headlines are in 1.0 spacing. And what I like here is not only do you have a YouTube link, but you also have dedicated to the run, running 2022, a spot here on the bottom right, and then table talk on the bottom left. In addition to Roger Federer, one different link, and then one to the Roger, which is his own brand of shoes. The on cloud Instagram account with a link and the conclusion where, as what we saw earlier with others with their closing suggestions, the company does a good job at marketing, not only to their country, but in other countries also. Featuring, of course, the brand and the unique look of the sole of the shoe. So those are some of the SAU media presentations, one and two, that Fall 22 students have given me in this class for Google Slides or Microsoft PowerPoint. And we also have Taylor, which was sent to me recently, where she's looking at, of course, the South Korean manufacturer, Samsung. In many living rooms across the United States and the world with the quality of its televisions and many hotels globally. Links to Samsung Electronics, the popular products, the sales and statistics, how they are being used globally for advertising and for public relations, but especially its appeal to the global markets. And remember, with internet communication coming up in the spring of 2023, Samsung, among other brands, will be featured at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. And there is how Samsung is collaborating with the South Korean group, BTS. And remember, we saw similar projects to this a few minutes ago with BTS the social media outreach, the overview, and what she thinks are the strong points of the brand globally when it is making an outreach, as you can see at the bottom, especially within the American market. The extensive research and preparation is obvious, which is vital to the growth of the company, as she quotes here, globally optimizing their practical approach to global marketing techniques. And then we go back up to the top. And I believe that brings us to the end of 2022 projects that have been produced and are available on the website. Now, those are everything other than Jonathan and Kalija and Haley on Canva. Then we get into the third media presentation moving down alphabetically to Beyond Yamaha to social and mobile media, which we'll be looking at next. We've shown you a lot of these in class, how you can take a social media approach and do it by country, you can do it by channel, you can do it by a variety of methods, including if you wanted to look at the social media approach of an international social media company or a messaging app like Kakao Talk, which was produced by Jamia Evans, now a social media specialist for the city of Little Rock in the fall semester of 2018. And considering this was four years ago, it holds up very well, outstanding international research. And you can also tell with the merchandising or rebranding with all of the different social media accounts and the website going through the friends, major updating needed, which was her example of constructive criticism, the Kakao talk link on Twitter, on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, about the project itself, how the messaging app was created, and why it has become so popular as a multifaceted messaging app for all different kinds of things around the world as it was developed in South Korea. And the unique title slide itself. 
Many of these, including Muzzmatch, the Moroccan dating app, and the German dating app. One was done two years ago by Alexis Flanagan for the Moroccan dating app Muzzmatch. And during the same class, someone who was equally creative with her international research, Liberty Henderson, was looking at Parship. Lots of creativity from all of these works. And then we get down to media presentation four, global perspectives of the United States, how people view us. And as you've seen from previous class sessions, you can go into a variety of methodologies on this. 2016, Germany, 2020, Germany, or 2016, Glamour United Kingdom versus Glamour United States. How they view us in other countries, you can take that approach. Ireland and Northern Ireland six years ago, 10 years ago, Israel, and then Kobe four years ago from Mexico, North Korea from 2018, North Korea 2014. If you want to look at it from different perspectives or you've got a different take on this, that's certainly okay as well. Here you've got stereotypes from China and Russia that Mackenzie Turner did two years ago. So like what we saw with social and mobile media from 2018 with Jamia Evans, and we went from top to bottom with her slide, now let's take a quick look at media presentation for international perspectives from Mackenzie Turner. Lots of links. How are we being viewed from both China and Russia? Now keep in mind, China and Russia, there's virtually no freedom in China. There's minimal freedom in Russia. Russia leaks like a sieve when it comes to social media. It's a little bit more locked up in Japan because it is intentional. The social media in Japan is intentionally built in such a way that it is more insular how the Chinese see America, how the Chinese want individuals within that country to view us, oftentimes not very favorably. So from their perspective, we might be the bad guys, and we would think that's obviously silly as a Western democracy. What do Russians think, the stereotypes? And even in democracies, there will be stereotypes about the United States from television, from social media, but when you're looking at them from dictatorships or theocracies, the distortions are intentional with the misinformation and the disinformation. So she's looking at, from back to front, international relationships, stereotypes with a link, how Russia views America, Chinese, how China views America from a different perspective, bizarre things Americans do, the stereotypical American, from what perspective? What are the common stereotypes? And in this case, she's got 11 slides, but it's very well done. So just take a deep dive from now until the end of the semester into all of these media presentations, look at the titles and do something similar, or just run by me what you think would be appropriate. Before we had position paper websites on Google Blogger. This is what students would do going back 10 years. Perspectives of local news, position paper one, which you're well aware of, position paper two, radio, which you still do, position paper three, authoritarian media, or position paper four, the wild card. Now you're doing all of those subjects on websites. And down here all the way at the bottom, we've got exams from 2012 all the way until the midst of the pandemic in fall of 2020. Let me now go from bottom to top on Google Drive and show you everything that has been posted over the past 10 years in this course. It's not that way for all of my fall 2022 courses. There are some projects, for instance, in media and politics that have not been posted from Google Docs or 
from Microsoft PowerPoint. These are all of the links to your websites. Jonathan, Gwen, Maggie, Haley, Trey, Taylor, Lauren, Kalija, and Carlin. And over here, you've got links to people who took the course from Sydney Waiter at the bottom to Brandon Atwood at the top from fall 2020. So if you would like to examine what they did for their position papers, number three, authoritarian media, or number four, the wild card, look there. Or if you are still working on the radio paper, which we've been talking about in class this week, you're more than welcome to examine any of those works, which leads me here. This is an informal checklist for anything that you do in a media presentation position paper course or what you might do for a blog. And that's why I have at the top SAU Media Critique, MCOM, and MM courses. MCOM meaning Introduction to Mass Communication or Media Law and Ethics, and then all of our mass media courses. It could be a blog, it could be a media presentation, it could be a position paper. In Introduction to Mass Com, of course, it would be a term paper. So is your for content research thorough, structure seamless, topic headline clickable, reporting extensive, writing concise, copy editing meticulous, factual accuracy precise, fairness inclusive, language descriptive, analysis thoughtful, persona authentic. For your visuals, is your design uniform, template creative, font color shading readable, spelling grammar accurate, text image balance comparable, interactivity recurrent, navigation optimized, storytelling dynamic, social engagement shareable, mobile compatibility friendly, and aesthetics engaging. So if you're doing a blog or media presentation or a position paper or a term paper, because some people will take intro to mass communication and another course at the same time, think about all of these elements in relation to what your classmates are doing right now or what your cohorts did in years gone by, and that includes any of the four media presentations from 2012, 2014, 2016, 2018, and 2020, not including, of course, what your classmates are doing right now. The last thing we'll examine during this special session is the syllabus. With a reminder, that when you get to page three, we get past all of the requirement data into supplemental information. A link to my website, a link to my Twitter feed under the hashtag of MM4133. And those of you who are still sending me Microsoft PowerPoint or Google Slides presentations, that's where they're sent. Always make certain that in your sent file, you have sent an attachment to the project itself. And then whenever you're looking at project ideas between now and the end of the semester, not only my website, not only the works of your classmates in real time, but also take a look at some of the topics. There may be something that you want to address in cultural diversity, global media systems, social media, anything here that might be relevant. We're always going to be slightly flexible on deadlines because as you're well aware, the bottom line to me in my courses is do they hold up in time? And most of the works that you see, whether it be broadcast journalism, radio or television projects, whenever I first came to SAU, or in the years before I came to SAU as a college professor, or anything that we do in the mass media emphasis, do they hold up? Whether it's radio for the second position paper, social and mobile media for the third media presentation, authoritarian media for the third position paper, 
International Perspectives of the United States, so the fourth media presentation. The fourth position paper, which is your idea for a course specific wildcard topic. The exam during finals week, and it still has not been posted on the SAU website. I'll keep you updated on that. And then class participation, making certain that as much as possible, you can be here. And then the final page of the syllabus is the required COVID information, which is very important, especially now that the weather is getting colder. If you feel comfortable wearing a mask or sitting in an area of the class where not a lot of people are, that's okay. Especially for those of you who are very leery of being in a closed space, or for those of you who may have some type of compromised immune system or someone from your family does, we always want to make certain that from an institutional standpoint, we are being as careful as possible because people are still getting sick and dying from COVID-19. So we always have to be very diligent for any immunocompromised students or those who are going home for family members in that regard. So I'm going to leave it right here as we wrap up our special session for the day, primarily to make certain that the works of Gwen Gunnels and of Taylor Rich could be highlighted and spotlighted. It's very possible that we will have another session like this at the end of the semester, but we'll play it by year. I think as a class, we're doing quite well. And I also think that when it comes to the uniqueness and creativity of your global research, we're coming along quite nicely. But when it comes to a media presentation or a position paper or your global research, always remember that the website, your classmates' works, my website, and Twitter are the best ways to do your overall research for projects, whether it be for me or for someone else. Bookmark this material in real time, whether it be from a website, something that you see on your phone, or a word or a phrase that may not necessarily come back to your memory, either as a topic for a headline in a media presentation, or the jumping off point for a paper that you might write on the blog. So that's going to conclude this special session of MM4133, Foreign Language Media in America, research session for the fall semester. We will continue in the classroom on Monday, which is October 31st. And that concludes the recording session for today. And when we return on Halloween in the classroom, we will resume research and presentations for position paper two, which is radio, and media presentation three, social and mobile media. So good luck with your upcoming research.